Welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Dara Breen. Joining this week are Andy Parsons, Catherine Ryan and Ed Gamble, Milton Jones, Hugh Dennis and Josh Whittacombe. We saw it around called Picture of the Week. I showed the panel a topical image and asked me to tell me what's happening. So here's a picture of the four Labour leadership hopefuls. What's going on here? Is it AshleyMadison.com relaunches with hip new image? <laughs> <laughs> Is it a new band called No Direction? No. <laughs> Is it a game of shag, marry, avoid, help across the road? <laughs> It's the photographer saying, could everyone with dark hair please smile like a murderer? <laughs> <laughs> Is it a charity appeal? Like, for three pounds a month, you could buy these deluded fools fresh water and false hope. <laughs> <laughs> Is it that Cooper saying, no, I'm sorry, I haven't got any change? <laughs> <laughs> I think the helicopter that takes them away is going to be too small if it has to land on that H. It's actually, it's the steps reformed and H couldn't turn up, so they just put him on the side. <laughs> <laughs> is this a photograph of two sisters and their brother, but when they came to develop it, there was actually an image of their long dead grandfather. <laughs> 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 Interestingly, Corbyn is on the far right there, which is the last time we'll ever say that. <laughs> this is Liz Kendall, Andy Burnham, Yvette Cooper and Jeremy Corbyn, who have all been campaigning to become Labour's next leader, the result of which will be announced on Saturday, and thus end this, please. This three-month-long, it feels like we've been doing this since Corbyn was young. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'll tell you what it looks like. It looks like Jack Whitehall in about 50 years' time. <laughs> Corbin mania, but you can't just put mania at the end of a word and think that it means something. Like Beatle mania, that was when they played to 55,000 people in Shea Stadium. Corbin mania is 1,100 bored pensioners in Norfolk. <laughs> He's rebelled, hasn't he, against the Labour leadership 500 times, over 500 times. You think if he does become Labour leader, there must be a very good chance if somebody votes against the Labour leadership, it is in fact going to be him. <laughs> <laughs> I think the chief whip will be going to his own party leader and could you please vote with the party once, twice, the rest of you. They say he's left wing, but he's got a, a size 10 feet, which is a massive Corbyn footprint. <laughs> people are just ganging up on him, though. So I think what people are underestimating is the fact that the British public love an underdog. So if we could, we would vote for the Jamaican bobsleigh team. So Jeremy Corbyn... <laughs> Be no well, that's what Alistair Campbell said, wasn't it? That he's the Susan Boyle yeah. of the situation. But that, that's, that's, A, unfair on Susan Boyle. <laughs> she had very different views on Trident. And B, <laughs> and B like, she had a lot tougher opposition. He would lose to Pudsey the dog. <laughs> if you went... Isn't Pudsey a bear? <laughs> Get your finger on the pulse, Grandad. <laughs> Pudsey like became a dog in 2012. <laughs> it's not an insult to call someone Susan Boyle either, because she surprised everyone by being excellent at her job. Yeah. <laughs> I think the reason he's winning isn't because he's good, it's because the opposition is so boring. Mm. Andy Burnham looks like... Have you ever edited yourself as a football player on Pro Evolution Soccer? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know the base player you start yes. with? Yes. It's just the most generic human in the world. That's Andy Burnham. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like someone who'd get to the sixth week of The Apprentice because you hadn't noticed him. <laughs> and then... Yeah, and I... And then and he I spent team... all those weeks really dreading the <laughs> one where we have to interview Andy Burnham for half an hour. And he'd become team leader and get kilograms and ounces mixed up, and that would be... <laughs> oh, so, Andy, did you enjoy the process? Uh, <laughs> I think when he loses, he should get a wheelie suitcase and walk out. <laughs> Andy Burnham was also very popular with the right wing, wasn't he, until they realised it was just his surname and not his policy on immigration. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I want to thank whoever from the uh, production company who left the disc for a Philips monitor user's manual on my desk uh, for me to see during the show. It's really handy. I'll <laughs> upload that as the show proceeds. <laughs> 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 it's in two languages, in Japanese as well. Oh, it comes with the monitor drivers and the smart control software. 
Lovely. Ching ching. Yes. <laughs> Does that mean that we've recorded none of this so far? <laughs> <laughs> In other news, what has Bob Gelliff offered to do this week? Well, he's, he's offered to uh, have refugees uh, stay in his homes. Yes. If you stay with Geldof, do you have to be polite about his music? Because <laughs> if I was, like, a refugee and I moved in with Bob Geldof and then the first morning he came down and said, I've written a new song, mm -hmm. I'd say, I'll take my chances in Calais. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's yeah. going to make Geldof easier to gas on through the keyhole, isn't it? <laughs> Imagine living with Geldof and you sort of cut yourself. The next thing is a massive rock concert in the back garden. You go, no, no, when I said Band-Aid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, and, and others have also joined in yeah. this the, uh, and, and, and offered their homes. I mean, it's, it's happening a lot across the country. Nicola Sturgeon has offered, hasn't yes, she? Yes, she has. Yvette, yeah. Cooper Yvette Cooper has offered, but she's very good with the downtrodden. She already has an unemployed man living in her house. <laughs> <laughs> from Syria, aren't they? They're, they're basically, they're desperate, yes. and then they're trying to improve their chances by turning up in Greece. I mean, that's like trying to improve your IQ by watching ITV2, isn't it? <laughs> You're wondering how many of the Greeks are actually going to try and get into Germany by pretending to be Syrians. <laughs> It does, the whole thing has pointed out how much better the European train system is, doesn't it? You can get a train, you can go, you can go Montenegro, <laughs> that you is, can that's, go that's Serbia, the main lesson. Hungary. No, it's I not. Think we've all <laughs> taken. It's not the main lesson. It's not the main lesson you... at all, but you can get to Munich in a couple of days. Over here, you would have reporters on the scene going, these migrants cannot understand that you can't use an off peak saver ticket to get to Waterloo. <laughs> You know, congratulations to the Germans, but I've, I'm going to say it, historically, I've, I've never forgiven them. For... <laughs> no. Do you remember Frank Lampard's goal in the 2010 World Cup? <laughs> that was way over the line. What? No way is this outweigh that. Yeah. You mean 800,000... No wonder they're trying to be the good guys eight, of Europe. You think this whole... taking in 800,000 <laughs> refugees... It would have made it to all, Dara! <laughs> Maybe that's it. Maybe that's it, Josh. The Germany's getting World Cup points for each Syrian that they let in. I've already got a fiver on a German Syrian to win Eurovision. I just like the narrative. <laughs> <laughs> there is an end to which, like, Germany won the World Cup under the team was partly Turkish as well. Like, whatever. Mm -hmm. This thing does work in sport. Mm -hmm. uh, Mo Farah, anyone? Uh, you know? Because, you know, that, there is another, you know, uh, migrant came over here. Like, they will boast your sporting chances, lads. Mo Farah is a Somalian who acquires gold on land. Nothing I don't like about him. <laughs> <laughs> I, I never thought I'd say this, but <laughs> part of me wishes Hitler was still alive. Wow, this is. Let us just savor the moment just of build up here. I want to know what's That's why they're going to edit that. <laughs> uh, so that's the end of that round. Uh, <laughs> no, because imagine his face. How livid he'd be. This is the ultimate victory over Hitler. Oh, see what you mean? Sorry. So, so not that Hitler is alive and still in charge of the third no, life, no. but that Hitler is in a retirement home somewhere going, I was in coffin, shuffling on while his Turkish nurse goes, Adolf, sit down. We've gone a long way. That was a long journey for me to set you up for your trademark impression, wasn't it? Always happy to throw in my little old man Hitler. Hey, man, you. At the same time, <laughs> <laughs> get the meat to Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I can do that dialogue. Like, <laughs> no, 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 yeah. no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, there is uh, the one I'm too busy is that everyone's coming north rather than they're like they're, they're in the middle of the Middle East. I mean, the question is, my fingers have been pointed at rich Middle East countries going, why aren't they? They're taking no one at all, right? And you've got to go, they? well, well, you know, the United Arab Emirates can't because they spent all their money on Raheem Sterling. Uh, <laughs> and... <laughs> Lebanon's got 1.2 million and Jordan's got a million. Excuse not, me, not, that, not that Jordan. Obviously, that would be a hell of an episode if what Katie did next. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. She has the land, for God's yeah, sake. Yeah, yeah. They, could ride, they could ride horses. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm meant to be at a photo shoot, but I've got 1.2 million migrants in my stable blood. <laughs> Um, yes, it is. Oh, my God. Hilariously, my monitor just stopped working. If only we had the instruction disc uh, for our monitor. 
hands up your hands. The are going to Josh you and the time. Now we play a round called My Mock Shake Brings All the Boys to the Yard. <laughs> this game involves Milton Jones and Ed Gamble, so if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This round is a stand-up challenge. I launched a wheel of news, and whoever chooses to stop, one of our performers must step forward and talk about that topic. OK, here we go. First subject, please. And the first topic is relationships. Ed. So I've just moved in with my girlfriend. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. Cheers, thanks for the support, Mum. That's good of you. Uh, uh, it's good, it's exciting. The first time I've lived with a girl, obviously we're finding out a lot more about each other that we didn't know before. Uh, what I found out about her is she's kinder, funnier, more sensitive than I ever realised. What we both found out about me is I am a terrible, terrible prick and so difficult to live with. Because <laughs> uh, it turns out I am a tidy person. I didn't realise. I thought I was normal. But apparently, it is not normal to have a favourite J-cloth. <laughs> she is a messy, messy lady. She is unbelievable. She's laid back, no worries. She says that a lot. No, who has no worries? Are you dead? Are you a robot? What's wrong with you? <laughs> you should wake up, worry, go to bed. That is a full day, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> she genuinely said this out loud the other day. Hakuna Matata. <laughs> I'm starting to think the actual Swahili translation of that is doesn't hoover. Because <laughs> there is underwear everywhere. This is an odd side effect of living with a girl that I did not fully anticipate. I no longer find women's underwear sexually titillating in any way whatsoever. Because <laughs> I used to be able to just see underwear and that was enough to get me excited. Didn't have to be a woman in it. <laughs> just be a bra on the floor and I'd go, ooh, boobs were there. That's... <laughs> It's enough. Now, nothing like that. I see a pair of knickers now, it's just something the remote control might be under. <laughs> well done, Obama. Very good. That leaves us with Milton. Let's see what you've been left with. Let's spin the wheel. And the topic is medicine. <laughs> I have to go to the chemist soon to collect my prescription. Not from PC World, like last time. <laughs> Those tablets were very difficult to swallow. <laughs> Recently, I went to the chiropractors, or as they call them in the capital of Egypt, uh, the practors. <laughs> well, I put my back out trying to shoot horses, but it turns out the World Health Organization aren't trying to eradicate polo. <laughs> My dad was a doctor, my mum was a nurse, they had six children, we all left home early. Well, they needed the beds. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the birthday, I asked for that game, Operation. Three years I waited. <laughs> I was talking to a nurse the other day. She said the main problem facing the NHS is Holby City. Actually, she might have said obesity. <laughs> well done. Get that on. Boys go to Ed Gamble. Let's turn the back. The next round is called, if this is the answer, what is the question? <coughs> on the board are six categories. Ed, which category would you like? Home news, please. Home news it is. The answer is 63 years. What is the question? What is the shelf life of a pepperami? <laughs> Easy. If Hugh Hefner is 88 years, how old is his wife's granny? <laughs> <laughs> is it, what is the battery life of my Nokia 3310? <laughs> is it, how long before the Lib Dems can legitimately book a conference room again? <laughs> is it, what's old for a child? <laughs> How long will it take before that American dentist feels comfortable putting his new lion rug in the waiting room? <laughs> <laughs> Is it, what does the TARDIS do to the gallon? <laughs> How long in his five-year career has Jack Wilshire been injured for? <laughs> How old does Cheddar have to be before it's described as off rather than mature? <laughs> 
is it how long um, has the Queen been our monarch? Uh, mm. You're absolutely right. That is about the Queen. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, yes. Yes, this week uh, the Queen surpassed Queen Victoria, 63 years, seven months and two days, making her the longest reigning monarch in British history. Are you all excited about this? Yep. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> That's she's, a very curious crown she's wearing there, isn't she's it? She's a double handed. <laughs> she's a. She's a double handed, I think it's called. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> should have spotted that. Uh, yeah. I don't know, you know, I've read, I think very little about the Queen, but I hope on this particular day she was sitting in a room with a giant portrait of Queen Victoria. Just ticking it off. <laughs> just staring at Queen Victoria <laughs> until, yeah. like, until her eye watch goes off. <laughs> and she goes, take the picture down. <laughs> <laughs> But we, in honour, though, in honour of this being a historic day, uh, we are uh, drifting from our usual um, format. Uh, we're going to have a quiz. Oh. We're going to have a quiz. Oh, I'll have a quiz. It is our Liz quiz. I like the expense that has been spent on that. I really want to thank you for coming in and recording that little uh, wave. <laughs> Um, what two common documents does the Queen not have? The Da Vinci Code. <laughs> <laughs> and Life of Pi. Yeah. Next. Uh, and, uh, yes. Oh, the rest of them, she has them all. She, uh, she, <laughs> she doesn't have a driving licence. She doesn't have a driving licence, no. no. Although she has qualified to drive. Yes, she has. She, you can drive. she was trained to drive in the army, as far as I know. She did, yeah. She yeah. stripped down engines and everything. Uh, absolutely, yeah, yeah. Passport. Yeah. Well, she, uh, <laughs> Doesn't have a driving license and Awful. is the only person in the country who doesn't need a passport as they're issued in her name. Oh. And so she cannot issue in her own name because, you know. But I think she's relatively good on the ID front because she just yeah, yeah. take out a tether and go, uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, You not get this? Go send a letter, bitch. Uh, <laughs> What did the Queen invent with a dachshund and a corgi? Oh. A doggy. Yes! <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, yes. I'm joking! <laughs> <laughs> she invented a breed of dog called the dorgy. Oh, you say uh, she invented it. What, she was there going, right, you put that in there now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She didn't invent it, though, did she? Um, according to this card, yes, she did. She couldn't have gone on Dragon's Den. <laughs> <laughs> One needs £30,000! <laughs> Forty <laughs> percent. <laughs> it's always forty percent. That's all they ever want. No matter how much you're going to say initially, yeah. eight percent, forty. Uh, <laughs> it's commonly known that the Queen owns the UK swans. Commonly known that yep. the Queen owns the UK yeah. swans. Says here. But what other water-based animals does she also have the right to own? Ducks. Not ducks. No. Shopping trolleys. I think it's, no, it's not. Is it dolphins. <laughs> It is. Wow. It's dolphins, oh, whales, and sturgeons. Pretty big on the royal family. I know a lot you, of stuff. You really are, actually. Yeah. It's quite worrying. Uh, well, <laughs> any dolphins, whales, and sturgeons within three miles of the UK, she, they're hers. Do the dolphins know, or do they just stray in and then that's it? <laughs> to get you close, she's in a speedboat constantly. Right? <laughs> Just patrolling a three-mile <laughs> limit around the country, right? And with their army of swans. With their army of swans. Yeah. It worked work to track them. <laughs> when she does that wave, she's actually doing a fin motion to summon her dolphin <laughs> army. <laughs> army of dolphins, assemble! <laughs> Dude, an army of dolphins. <laughs> I want forty thousand pounds for thirty-five percent of the company. I have invented a swallfin. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting though because we actually mock the week is a quiz. But, <laughs> yes, I yes, we, yes. we yes. just shattered that thing by going. Oh, we're going to have a little quiz. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> We've never done this before. Uh, I mean, the points go to uh, Josh and Steve. Uh, what unusual present might people be giving this Christmas? Oh. Dead seagull? <laughs> <laughs> Have you ruined the surprise? Yes. Uh, you are the worst um, secret Santa um, ever. <laughs> <laughs> Time. For God's sake, kill it. Um, <laughs> I, think it's, I think uh, it's actually sperm. It is sperm. It? Yes, it is sperm. Yeah. But this, this not an unusual gift. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Horrific return policy. <laughs> Not He's had 14 days. Uh... Oh, he's lowered the tone down. How have I ruined it? How have I ruined it? Hitler will be sat at home livid that you just said that. That's not a superb joke. Yes, but why is this? Uh, why is this story about? Because there's a there's a British sperm bank. Yes, which there is. Is only, since it's been set up, I don't know how long it's been set up, it's a while, it's like a year or a year and a half or something. Yeah, yeah. It's only had nine donors. Yes. Why I'm wondering who the other eight are. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you not all meet up? I presume if there's nine donors, they kind of meet up every, well, every, every Christmas and year and go, oh, swap stories. Uh, <laughs> not for biscuits, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he's a Hitler fan. <laughs> They paid 35 quid and they were yeah. saying, well, they could up their money to get more donors, but they don't want people just doing it for the money. And, oh, that's what you want, though. People just doing it for the love of it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> want, I want to get something back to this game, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like the, uh, yeah, I was, my, my dad was a sperm donor, my granddad was a sperm donor. <laughs> it's a long line of sperm donors, yeah. Is it 35 quid for the whole lot or 35 quid per sperm? No. Because I could be up, I could be maybe 160 <laughs> quid. <laughs> Yeah. What, what's the other reason, by the way, that people don't, uh, don't want to do Because when you're 18, they can uh, track yeah. you down. Yeah, they can. You're no, no longer um, uh, be an, an anonymous friend owner in this country. You don't yeah. need that, do you? You know? No. You, you've just cracked one off, not thought much about it. 18 years later, <laughs> you get this angry teenager <laughs> coming up. Ding dong. Dad! Hello, Dad! Why did you leave me? <laughs> uh, 35 quid? <laughs> No, there is. It, well, it's actually they've they've had a number of people attempt to be sperm donors. They need regular sperm donations, but it's a it's very difficult because it has to be frozen and then returns with the sperm has to have a very high motility, a very high. But it's strength. not very difficult to be the donor. No, no, it's, no. It's very. In it's many very, ways, it's the easiest job in the world. In, in any. Yes. <laughs> well, no, because you've got to go in, haven't you? You've got to go into the bank. Like I don't know about anyone else. I do most of my banking online now. So. <laughs> At the end of that round, the points for the Josh Hugh Milton. <laughs> now we come to scenes we'd like to see. So if everyone can make their way over to the performance area, I'll read out this week's topics, then we'll see what our panelists can come up with. OK, here we go. The first subject is on likely things to hear on Breakfast TV. You're watching Breakfast TV because the chemist won't have your Valium ready until mid-morning. <laughs> Breakfast news now. A man has drowned in a bowl of Cheerios. Sadly and ironically, his family didn't get a chance to say goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> this is BBC Breakfast. Look at it, that's meant to be a sausage. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you didn't see earlier on, we had steps. And that's why we interviewed Stephen Hawking outside. <laughs> Stay put for Jeremy Kyle. Today's tooth count is three. <laughs> the world of show business has suffered another tragic loss. But don't worry, it's one of the ones you already thought was dead. <laughs> A lot of people ask me how I stay awake at this time. Well, you know what they say, early to bed, crack cocaine in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Today we're looking at the world's biggest birthday cake. Oh no, Eamon's in it. <laughs> if you've been affected by any of the issues in today's Jeremy Carl show, then phone us up. You're the sort of freak we need to get on tomorrow. <laughs> Later on, we'll be meeting a man who has to go through 50 steps before he can orgasm. All that to come. <laughs> it's Channel 5, it's 5am, and I am going to sack my agent. <laughs> well, it's time for the traffic news now, here on Christian Breakfast Time. So let's go over to our Eye in the Sky. 
God. <laughs> If you hear a knock at your door, you could be the winner of 20,000 pounds. <laughs> Two knocks and it's a police raid. Hide the guns. <laughs> <laughs> now we're going over to the kitchen where Chef Tony will be cooking up an excuse for why he's been texting my wife. <laughs> Next up on Channel 4 Breakfast is a brand new homegrown British sitcom. Only joking, it's everyone loves fucking rape. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's take a look at the traffic. There it is. <laughs> brum, brum. <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to this one. In the studio, we've got the new Doctor Who. Accidentally killed someone. <laughs> okay. The next topic is lines you wouldn't read in a romantic novel. The dark stranger emerged from the sea, his wet shirt clinging against his muscular torso. Soon, she held him and said the words she'd been dying to say for ages. I'm UK Border Patrol and you're under arrest. <laughs> she felt every part of his eight inches. He was stiff, absolutely rigid, and even in her innocence, she knew her hamster was dead. He felt a swelling down there. Shouldn't have tried to bang a beehive. <laughs> he took her hand in his and squeezed it. Now, he thought, I wonder where the rest of her body is. I want to role-play. I'll be a prince from a mythical land, and you be your sister. <laughs> he cupped her breast and put her ass in a bowl. <laughs> she was into really weird shit. You could make love, she said. Or vole, he replied, looking up from their game of Scrabble. She felt her bosom heaving as Mr. Darcy came ever closer. Blimey, he said. You don't get many of them to the pound. <laughs> he grabbed her hand, he held it tightly, and they skipped off through the fields of daffodils. And it was at that moment she thought he might be a little bit gay. <laughs> He looked at the tattoo of Chinese writing on her back. He didn't know what it meant, but he did know she'd put out on a first date. <laughs> Jeremy Corbyn, you've got me blindfolded. What are you going to do now? Nothing. I just wanted to highlight the injustice of inmates detained at Camp X-Ray without a fair trial. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why does it end like this, she said. Childhood accident, he replied. I crushed it in the trouser press. <laughs> the debutantes paraded in the ballroom in front of the rich landowners, and the master of ceremonies proudly proclaimed, Let the Darcys fondle the arses. <laughs> Marjorie, I'm going to kiss you like you've never been kissed before. Of course I've seen a black penis before, she said. <laughs> Just never attached to a white man. <laughs> At the end of that round, the point's going to end, Catherine Randy! <laughs> and that's the end of the show. This week's winners are Andy Parsons, Catherine Ryan and Ed Gamble. Congratulations to Milton Jones, Hugh Dennis, and Josh Whittacombe. Thanks for watching. I'm Dara Breen. Good night.